meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Hello, ladies. Hi. How are you all feeling tonight? Wonderful. Awesome, awesome. Well, let me start first with um, thank you for coming on. And I'm going to give people just a few seconds to join. So I'm going to play my little uh, commercial that I put a lot of hard work into just so people can kind of wrap their minds around exactly what's going on tonight. Mm -hmm. I got to turn the sound on. Simple, I know, real simple. I'm proud of my commercial. I love it. <laughs> I'm proud of my commercial, but thank you again for joining tonight. Hello to all of the followers, all of the people that are logging on tonight. We are so glad that you joined us for Women Leaders Walk the Talk. There we go. And I have, um, I must say, I'm more than happy to uh, be sitting virtually with uh, each and every one of you for today's Women Leaders Walk the Talk, hosted by the Greater Youth Leadership Series, which is a company that I'm extremely proud of. I started in 2019 um, with the simple mission of trying to encourage leadership and help nurture it and develop it, but develop it in a way that starts with the individual and focuses on the individual so that they can become the most effective leader. Um, and so for those of you who joined us in October, I want to say it feels so good to be re reunited. And for those that are joining us for the first time tonight, I am grateful for your debut with us. And I say debut because by the end of this session, you will want more and we'll be back for round for the next round for round three. I think it'd be round three at this time. So um, for each of these sessions, I think it's really important that I emphasize its purpose and really simple. Um, is to maximize the volume and impact of female leaders from various backgrounds and hopefully help someone on their journey of leadership. My company's motto, as you can see on my t-shirt tonight, is uh, you cannot stumble upon greatness. You walk up to it and you introduce yourselves. And that's exactly what we're doing with uh, Women Leaders Walk the Talk, thus the birth of Women Leaders Walk the Talk. So we are looking to inspire, motivate, and infuse other female leaders on their journey of leadership as well as shed light to our female counterparts <laughs> relative to inclusion, respect, and the need for female leadership uh, equity across the board. So that's what's really important to me. Obviously, I'm biased uh, because I am a female, but I absolutely love everything leadership, and I understand its importance in every space, and I want to help to be able to promote that with women. So to kick off tonight's series. I probably don't even really need to do introductions, but I'm going to do them anyway. <laughs> I want to welcome our panelists, Nikki Gibbs with the Step Ahead Foundation, Shalia Harris with SCS Board of Commissioners, Verizon and Living Grace, and Sankedra Clay Hudson with Bloom Incorporated. Hello again, ladies. I want to say each of these women are necessary building blocks in their respective spaces. Like they are absolutely doing the work. They are walking what they speak, um, they are doing the action and that's what's uh, important. They have proven time and time again that that's what they're doing. So not only do they have a positive impact in their respective industries, but they also show up and show out in their leadership. And that's why I brought y'all on because y'all showing up and y'all showing out. And when I start you know, thinking about who should I bring on immediately, you all came to mind. So they are absolutely walking the talk. They do not give lip service but they carry out their ideas, their skills, and their values every day. So I'm gonna do a quick housekeeping and then I'm gonna jump right in. We're scheduled for about one hour. Um, we're looking for open and honest feedback. Um, I'll ask some questions, some discussions will follow. Um, I'll monitor the time and for our viewers, leave comments, ask questions, click the hearts and the likes, whatever emojis are in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and uh, share the live. So we want everybody to be able to um, soak in what's going to be given tonight and I just already know it's going to be amazing so I'm going to shut up and let the panelists introduce themselves no particular order whoever wants to go I'll go first okay. um, I'm Nikki Gibbs uh, with the Step Ahead Foundation uh, my passion is 
all things women, all things leadership, and all things Memphis. Love it, love it. I did go to Ole Miss, hotty toddy. Hotty toddy. Gosh <laughs> almighty, I'm not going to say the rest. <laughs> it changed into a bear, though, so. Right, yeah. It doesn't count, it doesn't count. We're hotty pity, right? Is it hotty pity? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll go next. Uh, I'm saying Kedra Hudson with uh, Bloom, and um, I have a passion for parks. I have a passion for people, um, parity, and equity. And that's what we embody uh, for communities at Bloom citywide. All right. Um, Shalia Harris, uh, Shelby County School Board Commissioner, District 5. Um, also work with Verizon um, as their state and local government affairs manager, a uh, fancy title for a lobbyist, uh, and then also I'm the founder and executive director of Living Grace Memphis. Um, my focus is youth, our children, um, doing everything that we can to make sure that we give them a solid foundation and then pushing them forward to that next step of whatever success looks like for them. And then, of course, uh, adding a lens of digital inclusion on there as well. Awesome, awesome. So one of the things, and I don't know if my audience can pick up on it, but what I really appreciate about this uh, panel tonight is you all are all about community. Um, you know, of course, you all have your own, I'm sure, personal agendas and goals and, and missions and things like that, but you all are all about community. So that's that was the uh, common thread that I uh, definitely felt with all of you. So I look forward to hearing that throughout the entire session. So when we finish today, audience, I hope you leave with tangible actionable advice for how you can navigate power structures as well as important sources of support because that's what's really key. So to my panelists in about, don't think too hard, five seconds, come up with what is your, if you were the last person on earth, um, not the last person on earth, I'm sorry, if you were one of 10 people remaining on earth and you are the one who is deemed the leader, what is the one leadership trait that you want to have? Um, to make sure that you can have those those people follow you successfully. I would say inclusion. Mm. Uh, if we're down to 10 people, I mean, I was, I thought about communication at first, but I would say inclusion, you want to make sure that everybody feels like they're a part and they have a role and they're important because what you don't want is that one little wanderer to go off and do something crazy and kill us all. And so inclusion, making sure everyone knows everybody plays a part, everybody's important, everybody is needed. So inclusion. Love it, love it. And I say transparency. Mm. You know, in order to follow a leader, you have to trust them. And you mm -hmm. have to know, you know, what's ahead. If there's only 10 of us left and you got the wanderer out, I need to be able to tell you, hey, Erica just fell off the wagon. We probably need to all bind together and see what we can do to bring her back. So that level of transparency builds trust. Mm. Mm. Good stuff. Absolutely. Um, uh, I would say, I'll go back to Shalia. Communication was the first thing that came to me because uh, at some point, if it's 10 people and you're the leader, nine of those people thought that your voice either uh, amplified their voice or mirrored their voice. Mm -hmm. So you want to uh, listen and um, you know, ask, ask the group, you know, and really reflect their needs. So I love it. I love it. So we have a, we have a main team tonight. I don't know if y'all heard that we got inclusion, we got a transparency and communication, which are, I mean, you can go on and on with a list of leadership, but those are really three key ones that when put together uh, can really make for strong successes. And I like the inclusion. I love the transparency. I love communication. And I have a feeling that we will hear that throughout, weaved in between the conversation throughout all tonight. So I always like to ask that question first because that usually is what resonates for the remainder of the conversation and for you to be able to focus in on and pay attention to. So we're gonna jump in with the first real question. Uh, one of the reasons I started this initiative uh, was to help people lend their voice. I thought it was really important for us to be able to hear those voices, like I said, create a larger volume of female voices and female leadership um, and there are so many opportunities for additional growth if we just let voices be heard. It's nothing to have resistance or opposition. As a female, I think we can all speak to moments, or just as humans, but let's focus on the female. As females, we can all think of moments where someone tried to 
um, turn down the volume on our voice or try to give us opposition to it. So how have you moved forward when it appeared you were not being heard for one or you were told voice would not work? Jump right in. Well, you know, <laughs> I think sometimes you have to sit, you have to sit in it. You know, mm. you can't be so quick to respond. I think as women and as leaders and as an African-American woman who's a leader, people expect for you to act out of emotion, mm -hmm. you know? So when you can sit in it, you can be intentional about how you respond to it and then how you approach it. So I sit in it, I don't just respond. I gather myself, I see what's the best approach I can take and then I pounce on it. But it, right. it's just about sitting in it first. Right, right. And I like that because when you think about sitting it or you think about opposition and people not wanting to hear your voice, you're really having to go in like problem solve mode. You know, and so like the project manager in me says, we got to sit back and assess what's happening. And that's what you're sitting in, sitting in it does, you know, it gives you a chance to really take in everything so that you can give the right response the first time uh, and really have an impact for change. So I like that. I love that the right response the first time. It's, it's perfect. I, I like that piece. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess to piggyback off, Nikki, I would say um, just in TD Jakes, um, as leaders, we're tasked with having a 360 view. So you do have to get still. You have to see the entire, you have to have a giraffe view or even higher sometimes. So stillness, absolutely. I agree. I'm going to go against the grain a little bit. Um, I agree with what you all said, but if someone, if I see that someone is trying to shut me down or shut me up or stop me from doing the things I know I'm supposed to be and can do, mm. I get louder. Mm -hmm. and not audible the way I show up I get louder the mm -hmm. way I present myself moving forward I'm more assertive more aggressive you know not necessarily loud and you know audible but I, sh I level up mm -hmm. I level up in every way once I figure out that you know okay this person or this this area they're trying to shut me down okay well I'll be back tomorrow this right way. right you know, well, strategize that's come another avenue. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And I and I actually welcome that. Challenge me yeah. because that makes me better. And so if I see that you're trying to shut me down, okay, well, I need to be stronger in this area. So I show up even better that next day. I love I love that's that perspective. My district representative, because I like when you show up and show out. <laughs> and, and since we use the S word, show up, show out, we're gonna throw strategy. There you, go. you need a strategy. Yeah. Um organization, uh, a system for what, you know, your decision. Mm -hmm. And so I guess e even in this stillness, speaking to Shalia's point, strategy uh, and, and showing up. And sometimes strategy, sometimes strategy doesn't call for stillness. Sometimes you do have to kind of do what you're going to do and apologize later. Mm -hmm. That's a major part of leadership of uh, being decisive, make a decision. Right. And, um, and, st and stand on it, so. And we don't have the opportunity or, or the privilege to yeah. mess up. We don't have yeah. the privilege to, you know, go in and make mistakes. Oh, I forgot, you know, we don't have that at all. We have to be on at every point, every minute. So I don't know if that's pressure that we just put on ourselves. It's not realistic, but in our world, <laughs> that is new woman only black person period at a lot of our tables and so we have to be on every single time there's a reality to it i think we may sometimes maximize it larger than it has to be sometimes in some spaces but it's absolutely a reality um i, I won't argue that point at all mm -mm. Well, you know, that brings me to uh, my word for this pandemic is double grace you know the grace i have to extend to myself and the grace that i have to extend to others but unapologetically walk in my why, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. owe anybody an explanation for that. But mm -hmm. I will give you a little grace. I'll give myself a little bit, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna show up and what you see is what you get. Absolutely. At any table. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. So we're gonna stay on the track of opposition and I didn't mention it earlier, but um, I always kind of split this up in kind of four categories, opposition, success, ideologies, and then your own personal beliefs. So as you can hear, we're obviously talking about opposition. And so uh, there is this perpetuated myth, and you all will understand why I'm saying myth, that women can't work together or can't get along 
and especially can't lead other women. Um, I got chills on that because like it truly is a myth that I, I can't stand that it's it becomes people's truth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that, but clearly this panel is showing that it's not true, right? So how would you describe your experience with leading other women? Um, I'll say, and I've had maybe two or three positions uh, previously that I've led teams and with women on them. Um, you're always going to have those different personalities. You're going to have the woman who, it doesn't matter how good you are, she is going to fight you on everything because it's either something within her or, mm -hmm. you know, jealousy, which is real. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to have that woman. You'll have the woman who wants to aspire to be like you. Mm -hmm. uh, that can be a positive thing. And then you're going to have those women who, you know, really want to get things done and really just don't care. Like, let's just do it, let's just go forward. So being able to identify people's personalities, build those relationships, whether you, you know, uh, come to agreement on everything or not, be able to find some common ground. That has been a tool I have used for, for a long time, man or woman, find common ground with that person, whether you have the same beliefs or not, and just get things done. And mm -hmm. make sure that you keep the vision and the mission of the company or the organization at the forefront of everything you do and you'll never go wrong. Absolutely. To quote, you know, to quote Tabitha Brown, you know, this, 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 um, not, not Tabitha Brown, because what she was saying, you know, just get the mission uh, of the organization. But um, I, Bloom is a new agency. I come from uh, an entrepreneurial background, um, a consulting background, but the woman that I manage in leadership is myself. You have to be mindful. You have to know yourself. You have to uh, have a level of emotional intelligence. And that comes through knowing who you are. So, you know, I'm grounded in me. I, I know my value system. I'm, I'm secure in my character. And so when you are, so when I have been challenged with clients or, you know, that you, you would be amazed at the amount of projection you know, from men or women. So, you know, I don't steal. And for me to take their emotion, I'm stealing from them. That belongs to that person. I don't carry that. So, yeah. Well, as an add on to what you both said, uh, with leading women or with just leading people, you have to take the time to get to know them on an individual basis, not just as an employee, a staff member, but who are your kids? What do you like to do outside of work? You know, how are you feeling today? I could be on a staff meeting with my team on Zoom and I can feel the energy. I can see the face. I see the rest and be face and I'm texting. Hey, what's going on? Is it, you need to turn your camera off? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need a moment? And then I have a before five or work me. And then it's a, do you want that after five me? That's how I interact with my staff. That's the real one. That's not the one who's on the clock who has to say, well, you know, I can't tell you this or this. Let's come to after five. So you have to get to know people and understand how they work, you know, and, and be able to manage those personalities because you're managing talent and you can stifle their growth or you can help them to continue to grow. And I look at managing women as an opportunity for me to pull up another seat at the table. When I lead the Step Ahead Foundation, I want someone to be able to be promoted from within. That says a lot about your leadership when you are grooming people mm -hmm. to take over. So I want all the seats filled up, folding chair, rocking chair, bring them all because that's your seat at the table. So leading women is, is leading the next generation. Mm. I love it. I hope y'all hear these strategies out here. Like literally I heard a strategy, you know, focusing on the greater mission of the organization, not taking things personally. Um, you know, focusing on yourself, understanding who you are um, with the greater leadership, our core number first, I'm sorry, our first core value is self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you got to know who you are, what your values are, what you bring to the table, and then how you can pull somebody else up is what I heard from Nikki. Like, that's a main strategy. I hope y'all taking notes because I am. <laughs> I'm taking notes because that, that's a really good strategy when we talk about not just leading women, mm -hmm. but just leading human beings. And I always say, I always like to uh, ask this question in one of my courses. It's a change management, uh, change management course. And it's like, what's easier to manage, you know, human or non-human components? And obviously I say the non-human uh, component, but that human component, there are so many layers and so many complexities to it. 
Um, but y'all just got a strategy for it tonight. I hope y'all are listening to that. So we're going to move into successes. We talked about, you know, um, you know, things, you know, pushing against us as we're trying to move forward. But I know y'all are out here winning. I'm gonna be honest, I wouldn't have y'all on this panel if y'all weren't, right? <laughs> y'all are out here winning in these streets. And I want the people to be able to hear some of your insight on how you've been able to do that. So here's one question. The pandemic has raised a lot of eyebrows uh, on securing stability with their finances. We're gonna talk about money for a second uh, and equitable, uh, equitable um, pockets. Let's say that equitable pockets. So for the person that's seeking out a new job, or let's say the woman who's seeking out a new job or promotion, when you go in to negotiate a salary and scope of work and need to be specific, what exactly have you done? Um, how much have you accomplished? What have you been able to leverage so that you can feel, feel like you are getting what your comparable uh, pay is for what you're bringing to the table? Uh, and if you hadn't, you know, what do you want to do in, in the future? You know, what's worked for you in the past? Well, I, I guess I could say what worked for um, work for me and clients also, because of course I have a social work background. Um, I would uh, in family self sufficiency, so we would uh, train clients on, uh, you know, they would be connected to job skills programs. But first of all, you have to understand that it's a negotiation. You do not get what you're worth; you get what you negotiate. Mm. So well, go do that first, and. I would tell the young ladies to have a number. I would, you would be surprised. I would meet them and say, how much would you like to make? Well, I, I don't know right now. I mean, I mean, I was like, you want 32 more cent? You want a dollar? You have to know your number. Mm. And then, you know, add to that. Mm. But I, I would just definitely know your number. Know what the number value is. And then of course, research and, do your market comparison and, you know, uh, lateral compares, like all these comparisons, but definitely know your number. Right, right. That's important. I agree. That's important. What about you, Nikki or Talia? Um, I agree with, I'm sorry, Nikki, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Um, that's the thing. We're so nice to each other. Um, <laughs> I agree with on, real world. When people stop being nice in the room. Right, right. right. <laughs> With, uh, with what you said about you'll never be paid how much you're really worth. Um, something that has worked for me, my past two, my past two jobs, doing the market research, you know, in this position, how much are people getting paid on average, you know, doing research on the actual organizational company themselves, how much money are they actually making uh, every year, you know, annual revenue, all that, look into that, but then do a deep dive into not just your strengths now, but think about your potential. Mm. Say you did get into that position and things that you, you know, you project that you would pick up, that you would learn different skills that you will obtain, like mm. use that as well. And like you said, have your number. And I'll say this in the most humble way possible. I don't accept more than six figures anymore, ever. And I never will. More. You said six figures. Again? I don't accept less than six figures. Hey, less, less. And I'm saying this as humble as possible. I hope y'all don't take it the wrong way, but no, no, no. We <laughs> ask that humble. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know what I bring to the table. I know the education <laughs> I have. I know the the drive that I have. You know, there's there's not been a job I've applied to in the past seven years that I qualify for. Mm -hmm. And I did that on purpose. I looked at a job, I looked at the requirements, yeah. looked at you know the expectations, like, hmm, none of this is on my resume. But I think I can do this. I know I can do it. I applied and there it is. I got to stop you before we go to Nikki because I have been in so many conversations like this year alone, whether it be a webinar, conversation with girlfriends off to the side, but men, and I can't remember the statistic, forgive me for not remembering, but I'll say they can see 20% on a, rent, on a uh, job description that they actually meet and they absolutely will apply for it. I'll say 5%, you know, I'll go that low. 2%, whatever you want to call it. But women, we will look to make, to meet 100% uh, or look to say, oh, do I meet 110% of what this job description says before we will actually go on the computer, log on and apply for it or submit that application, the paper application. We tend to be very hard on ourselves 
And I promise you, I just love that what you said. <laughs> I, I really and just can appreciate that. This last job with Verizon, which I do plan to retire with them because they treat me so well. I looked at the job and I saw, oh, I, I'm a good communicator, communication skills check, willing to travel 60% of the time. Absolutely. Check. <laughs> Let me go ahead and apply. That was literally it. <laughs> I knew for a fact I can, I can do those too, but everything else, I was just so interested in learning about it. Not mm -hmm. that I already had the information, but I knew I had to drive to learn. I just went for it. Mm -hmm. and don't and don't I don't mean to make a shout tonight but that also speaks to faith and then I just want to I just want to sit there right there because it speaks to knowing you know um what what and who is going to place you where you're going to be placed so I love that Nikki I'm sorry I got got caught up can I just before just, Mike I don't have a mic but I just stop my lip gloss I don't, I don't think there's much more you can say behind it but one thing I will add is confidence mm -hmm. you know when I got to a Step Ahead Foundation, I came in volunteering and I did it because I believed in the mission and there was a history there. I understood why this was important. And being a Memphian, these are my folks. Mm -hmm. These are my cousins, these are my sisters, these are my friends, these are my aunties. And guess what? It could have been me. So right. I looked at it much different. But when I came in, I had to negotiate once I started moving up in positions. And I'll say this, I went back to the drawing board five times. Like, there's still not enough for me. Mm. You know, Jordan got six rings, so what are we doing? There's still not enough for me. Mm. I, 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 man, here I go again. Knock, knock. Hey, it's me. But I never came without showing the impact I've had. And, you know, if I'm bringing in my my uh, relationships, I'm leveraging relationships that I've had from my previous life, that's business development. So it's knowing the right words to use so that you can get to where you need to be. And I'm like, Shalia, and I'm just like you saying, I'm whatever it is on that job description, I can do it. I may not have done it before, but I got the confidence mm -hmm. and I know I have the resources. I have a, a connection of women around me, not just women, you know, it's not a Beyonce moment, but I have a network strong enough that whatever I need to get, I can get it. And I just think that comes with faith in yourself and instilling that in our children as well. There's nothing you can do that you can't do right. if you put your mind to it. So I drop the mic on that. I won't accept anything under it because I know who I am and whose I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also get Wait, I'm sorry. Huh? I, said, I, thought, I, thought, Nikki, I thought you were the founder of a step ahead. Look at God. Look at God. Why are you doing that? I know. I thought Nikki that. Nikki. Come on, Nikki. But you know what, though, Shalia? And this is the thing I tell people, even uh, my team now. I said, I want you to do your job as though you're the boss. I'm not your boss. Mm -hmm. You represent your own brand. I said, when you leave here, Every single partner that we partner with should be knocking down the door to hire you. And it should be that you love your job enough that you stay here with us. I don't want to stifle your growth. When you go out, represent you and your brand. So I appreciate that. That is like the highest compliment. I really, I thought when I first met you, I was like, oh, I like her. She has her own organization, doing good things. Let me stay connected with Miss Nikki. <laughs> I saw these blessings on this bottom of this screen right here. You two are the founders. And honestly, it's, it's, it's humbling to be on a uh, platform with you ladies. You're looking at me one way, but I'm looking at all three. You know, it, it's, it's all across the board that you guys have succeeded in your fields. And, and I'm just trying to get there to create my own. But I thank God for being able to lead Someone else's, you got to follow before you leave, right? True story. True story. True story. Y'all so bad. Y'all so bad. And I, just, and I uh, also say, you also have to get to the point in the negotiation where a piece of the money becomes cheap because if you don't have peace of mind, the money is cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to structure these deals where we thrive, our children thrive. Um, it's a wraparound style, like Shalia, to speak to Shalia's point, uh, they treat me well. You're not mm -hmm. only dating a company, they're, you're dating, they're dating you, but you're dating them. Mm -hmm. Does this place represent you? How much of you do you have to compartmentalize to walk through that place? Um, and what pieces are you not able to recoup? Mm -hmm. So... We want to, you know, take that to the table, too. So it goes back to Kristen and Nikki, just emotional awareness, knowing who you are 
in the things that you value. So big, I like that. Audience, we getting y'all paid tonight. Okay. <laughs> Go, go walk in the office okay, tomorrow okay. And tell them what it is. <laughs> Have your strategy though, but let, tell them what it is. Fill out that application. Do what you got to do so you can make that, you know, for that happiness, for that sanity, you know, for that value. I love it. I love it. Y'all so bad. I have to keep saying that. Y'all so bad. <laughs> so um, I always like this question. Um, any of y'all cook? Who cooks? Who's, who's a cooker? All right, we got one cook. It's all right, it's okay. I mean, if you warm some up in the microwave, then my homemade. Then my homemade. Let me prove it. If you want, if you look, she turned the whole camera off. <laughs> if you warming up the noodles and putting the uh, rain yeah, don't pull up the greens out and hide the can and put a little bed back in it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I get it. My child is still alive, so I'm doing something okay, right? Uh, but when we talk about, let's talk about sauces. Most cooks have sauces that work best for them, even for those of us that don't cook. You know, maybe we like to put a little extra salt or a little extra Lowry seasoning, you know, uh, Obey, whatever it is. Uh, what do you consider your success sauce to be? What has worked for you that others may be able to translate to be successful as a female leader? Uh, it could be singular, it can be collective efforts, uh, but what has moved the needle forward for yourself? I know that's a loaded question, but it's very loaded. I, I looked at it uh, when you sent over the question. I was like, mm, I don't want to think too hard about that one. But my immediate response is obedience. Mm. Um, my faith is the center, the foundation of everything I am, everything I do, I breathe, I touch it. It all wraps around God and the purpose that he gave me while I am still living and breathing on earth. He told me specifically, take care of my children. Mm. And so everything that I do has to be rooted in that. Mm. Everything that I do has to be aligned with the purpose that he gave me. If you're out of whack, it's just like you're being out of alignment with your back. You're in pain. But as soon as you go to the chiropractor and they get your back aligned, you can walk straight and you can walk with boldness and assertiveness. So for me, just, just being obedient to what God tells me to do even if it doesn't make sense, because it never does. Mm -hmm. when he told me, when he, whenever he tells me to do something, I'm like, who, uh -huh. how, when, why? Uh -huh. It never makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I just go for it because I know that God's never going to give me a vision without provision. And so mm -hmm. if you take that step out there and you just do it. He's always going to show up every single time. And I have faith in that. So for me, just, just being obedient and being, and making sure that God's voice is the loudest voice in my ear. Love it, love it. I should have had this on Sunday. No, that's all right. We can, we can on a Thursday night take it there too. Yep. On a Thursday, yes. <laughs> on a uh, Thursday. Shalia, I, I, I was listening to uh, I forgot the question because see she because the past I was listening to the preacher and he said many times we think God want our effort, but He just want our obedience. That's mm -hmm. it. What you thinking about? Uh, I need another certification. Since you certified, mm. uh, I need you certified because you his. He said the full this earth and the fullness thereof. That's it. Everything I said belong to you. Your gifts will make room for you. Mm. They will. Love it. Love it. He's gonna give this one to Shalee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the, what the guy go that way? <laughs> right. Said so Keisha couldn't even remember the, the question, but see what you to it, Shalia. <laughs> oh, be but so much, so much truth, so much truth, so much truth to it. Absolutely, absolutely. But we do have to keep that in mind. You know, if you are someone of faith, to let God lead you in your decisions, and it is hard, and especially sitting at a table where you know sometimes what you might be instructed to do goes against everything that could get you funding mm -hmm. everything that could make everybody smile and laugh and happy when you leave but when you obey god he'll make sure that he sees that thing through and sometimes it's just trusting him blindly and god knows i've had to trust him blindly i think one more thing i'll add to it is uh authenticity you know what you see right here is the same nikki you're gonna get when i'm in the workhouse when you see me out with my friends, when I'm with my family, when I'm with the donor, no matter who I encounter, I'm going to be exactly who you get on this podcast. And I think that's something that 
should be all of our secret sauce. You shouldn't have to dumb down or change who you are or leave certain parts of you out and not feel comfortable filling spaces. You know, it's time out for that. I think this pandemic has showed us what's really important and what is not. And even with workspace, you don't have to sit in an office and, and watch folks to make sure they work. And as long as they can get the job done, man, go home and be with your kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I bribe mine downstairs, you probably hear my dog snoring in the background, but as long as I can get my job done, mm -hmm. that's all that matters. So trying to fit this mold of being perfect or being who people want us to be, it's just time out for that. That authenticity will take you so much farther than trying to be a chameleon and fit what everybody else needs you to be. It's true. It's we true. are the sauce. You know, you know the, so to every program I meet, you know, I look at, I say, you know, we're the season, we're Lowry's. I, I look, free promo, but it's in the space that I work in, you know, we have, we, we have uh, you know, metrics and outcomes and we, and we can, you know, speak in that language, but maybe, you know, I'm the sauce is seasoning. You know, this mm. salt bay, you know, on whatever yeah. I'm gonna expand whatever you're talking about. You know, we're gonna make it better. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna be palatable mm. if that's you know what we're trying to do. So we are the south. Black women are the south, black children, black ideals, mm -hmm. um the culture. So just keeping that forefront too. Love it, love it. Okay, so I mentioned earlier um, the common thread with all of you are community. So not only uh, do each of you individually believe in the importance of community, but the various roles um, required are your focus on, you know, using strategy to be able to carry out community. So what does community mean to you and how do you believe people can be most impactful because of it or through it? Um, I think it's really just within the word, I see unity. When you think of community, that's people coming together with, you know, a common cause, a common mission, a common need, and finding resolve, finding um, love in that space, finding acceptance, finding purpose in that space, and being able to live that out. That is community to me. Um, being impactful with that is just doing your part. Whatever that may be, how, you know, however big or small you may think it is, just do your part. Mm -hmm. If everybody does their part in alignment with what they're supposed to do while you're here, you'll see success. You'll see, you know, communities thrive, cities thrive, economy thrive. You'll see all of that. We just have to do our part. Mm. Love it. I said that knowing your lane, you know, knowing your part mm. and, you know, being respectful of what that part is you play in a community and knowing that it's equally as important as somebody else's who might be seen as more important. So just knowing what your purpose is in a community and being a part of the team, being a team player is so important. You know, there's no I in team and mm -hmm. realizing the impact we can have together. I think that that's a part of building a strong team too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll say also, it goes with like, so when you, the first question you asked is how we manage women and, and Shalia said, you know, she sees the sameness. Um, and, I, and it's easier to find, you know, to lead with similarities. So, uh, you know, that's a part of it, just, you know, locating that sameness and operating in that space. Mm -hmm. And a uh, second tenet to that is uh, eliminating that scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to walk in abundance. So we go back to that too. It's not a, your resources are not limited. Sometimes, you know, thoughts may be limited or mm -hmm. your action is limited even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So oh God, for your, you know, my grace will meet your efforts. So, you know, in your lane, work in your lane, meeting God's grace. Yeah, that's, 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 that's it. Good. What's your organization's name, Shalia? Living Grace. Living Grace. I'm it's a lifestyle. Place. Grace is a lifestyle. Yeah. You give grace, you, you receive grace. Mm. 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 Y'all bad. I'm going to keep saying it. Y'all bad. Well, so. Yeah. Where am I, Grace? Living Grace is going to meet your effort. Living Grace is going to meet your effort. Come on. Let's go. So let's move to personal <laughs> um, personal thoughts, you know, personal um, values, or we, we'll say that. So we have to be motivated by something 
or someone um, so that we can move and navigate through leadership. Um, whether it's a purpose or responsibility, what is your why when it relates to leading? What's your why? Lead because, for one, I, I just think that is what we're supposed to do. And, mm -hmm. and my folks grew up in South Memphis off of Kansas and Faye Street. And sorry, I had to throw South I'm Memphis in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I say this, you know, <laughs> when I was growing up, I, I, I when I saw the question, I, I contemplated sharing this story, but I will. When I was growing up, my grandmother's house was the one where everybody went to for the holidays. Mm -hmm two two bedroom shotgun house now keep in mind everybody else got their nice big houses but grandma's like uh-uh that's my that's my time my space we all crowded in there about 50 of us and i can remember once as a little girl one of the neighborhood women came in and she was a prostitute she came in to use the bathroom grandmother's house was open for everybody she came in used the bathroom washed her hands we were eating and she walked out of the restroom and she was like, oh, it smelled good. I'm so hungry. Me as a little girl, I said, Grandma, you're not going to let her come and eat, are you? My grandma said, give her your plate. Mm. Who, who plate? Oh. <laughs> she said, you treat. And then once, she gave, once I gave her my plate, it pulled me to the side. And she said, you treat everybody with the same respect that you treat me, that you treat your mother, that you treat anybody else. Mm. That is a human being. And that has stuck with me throughout my life. I treat the CEO the same as a janitor, the same as a woman who's out working, the same as anybody else. And I think my grandmother is the one that I give credit for. And I mean, give credit to for that. When she passed away, uh, her funeral was in Coldwater, Mississippi. And everybody from South Memphis was there in cold water, even the junkies who didn't have cars. I couldn't even cry because there were people that I saw on the street who I'd never seen clean themselves up, actually clean themselves up and wanted to be presentable to show their respects to Miss Katie. So when I think about my why, I think about that woman who uh, grew up in South Memphis, who raised all of her kids there who made sure that we knew the importance of treating everybody like they're somebody. Mm. And that's how I feel like I'm supposed to lead. And in leadership, you're a servant leader. It's not about you. Mm. You serve the people who God had given you to lead. So that was a lesson as a little girl that I had to learn that has stuck with me until this day. And thank you for choosing to share that one. That was a good one. We needed to hear that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nikki, that was I almost I had to. I just had to. But it reminds me so much of my maternal grandmother, and I remember my great grandmother and my mom and my aunts. Like you take care of the neighborhood. Absolutely. Like when grandmama cooked, grandmama cooked for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and just everybody. woke up like this. <laughs> This, your purpose is your responsibility. Okay. That's what you're supposed to do. We're here to serve. That's what we're supposed to do. Excuse me, that's what we're supposed to do. But when you start talking about your grandma, oh my gosh. Like it just, like it's almost the same thing. Grandmama took care of the whole neighborhood, you know, and they were strong and bold and, and just talented women, but yeah. they, they weren't very showy. You know, you have the stuff that my mom is telling me now, I'd never heard my grandmother say and my great grandmother talk about how talented they were playing different instruments, traveling the world, being missionaries. They never talked about anything. They just did it. They mm. just did it. And so knowing that and, and taking that and helping or using that to mold me uh, as a woman, you know, you just take care of everybody. If you have the resources to do it, just take care of people. That's like, it's, it's so simple. It can be complex, but it's just so simple. Take care of your neighborhood. That's it. Take care of your neighborhood. Absolutely. Love it. Um, so, whoo, yes, Nikki. Yes. Yes, Shalia. Yes, Grandma. Um, so my, my grandmother raised me. So we'll start there. I, I was just surrounded by, you know, entrepreneurs before we had a word for it. So mm. my Aunt Cora, uh, we trig a lot of days. She was the neighborhood candy lady. She was teaching me how to count. Mm. 
So every, you know, every pink cookie sold, every freeze cup, um, those, those, that was her imparting skills that on this, that we call entrepreneurship now. Um, so candy ladies are entrepreneurs. Absolutely. That's the name. That's another name for entrepreneur, y'all. We want to, the candy lady is entrepreneur. Um, and also, you know, Jacqueline Partee, God rest her soul. She was the administrator with Memphis Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. um, she came to be the adult that I needed. Uh, I was 13 years old and she said, the kids in foul homes or in foot homes, they need a voice. Do you want to come sit on the Memphis Housing Authority Youth Council? She took, you know, a child out of South Memphis to Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill? I'm two blocks away from the, um, I'm two blocks away from the convention center, had never been in it. She gave me the gift of exposure. And that is my goal with mission. This is my mission, my goal with Bloom. She helped me bloom. She planted a seed. So I'm not, I'm not asking, you know, I'm not interested in how, you know, why, why, how, how can we help? How can we assist? You know, I'm not, she saw, she saw me and um, I just aspired to be the adult that I needed and just, you know, I showed up as I was and, and, and that's how she received me. And that's, and, and to Nikki's point, you know, we had a lot of people that's uh, building without asking. I got to stop that. Uh, communities know what they need, but if you don't ask, then you're left to assume. Mm -hmm. Communities have voice, things exist, and because I say candy lady and you say entrepreneur, they don't make me any less heavy. So those are the things or the, you know, that they imparted in and that um that I just carry, y'all. So just no. part of the candy lady. Because I had conversations with people who aren't from the South and like candy lady. I'm like, yeah, yeah candy lady. That is the first store that you go to. You Absolutely. go shake everybody's purse everything that didn't fail in the car between the seats and you know you want a pickle you want a freeze cup mm -hmm. then they got real bougie and start selling nachos with rotel i mean add you a little chili come on enterprise i, I didn't get a nacho in my kid lady i just want to put that out <laughs> i got real yeah, freeze cup. Nachos. <laughs> she went to sam's <laughs> got some peppers just free peppers i want that many just two yeah right. But all of those whys are beautiful, beautiful. Um, so one of the last questions I kind of want to ask tonight, um, my daughter's favorite so uh, songstress is, um, and you know, she and I, we kind of debate on this because Whitney is mine for the record. Anybody who wants to dispute that, let's go right now, okay? Um, but she loves Alicia Keys, right? And one of, the, one of my favorite songs by Alicia Keys is Superwoman. Um, you know, wearing my S on my chest, you know, all the time. What is your superpower? What makes you the superwoman? What's your superpower? I, I love that question. I love to hear how you define your superpower. Um, I'm a connector. Mm. That's my superpower. Um, I might not have the answer all the time, but I know somebody who does. So let me go ahead and, and put you in connection with so and so because I know where you're trying to go. So let me let me do my part and push you to that next level you know, to whomever else is an expert at it. I know my limits, but what I, I can own, I can connect you with somebody who can get it done. Love it. Um, I, think I mirrored that one. I mean, that's one of my superpowers. I can connect you and I don't mind. And I think a lot of people are so afraid of, you know, losing their lane or their spot that they fear connecting people. But, you know, when God gives you a gift and, Here's my second superpower. I can walk into any room. You can put me in the board room. You can put me in the dice room. You can put me on the golf course. You can drop me wherever you want to drop me. Give me two minutes. And I'd have made five best friends. Mm -hmm. Not five best friends that I won't talk to. These are five best friends who I'll keep in contact with, who will check on me, check on my child, know my mama name. They might even call me little Sheila, but I met them <laughs> not growing up 
I just met them by chance. So I just showing up in the moment and being present. That's one of my superpowers. And then being able to connect with anybody, no matter what walk of life they're from. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's, that's perfect. Um, mine is, again, that 360 view, that strategy. Um, I'm, I'm strategic. Uh, I used to be scared of that word because also, so you got a strategic and slime, you know, in in in, in, that, in neighborhoods, you got to, you know, uh, strategy gets a bad name sometimes because you got people that that uh, use that superpower for bad. Just like we're talking about heroes, you know, strategy is amazing, but if you use it for the wrong reason, uh, you're actually doing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. So, um and it's with most superpowers. So yeah, strategy will be mine. And, and you connect when you use strategy. And that's what I like. There's this, you know, they all go together, the puzzle pieces. Uh, for me, I always feel like my superpower is my drive. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I've got to be strategic. I've got to see the value in people. I've got to be able to connect and communicate and be inclusive and you know, and be transparent. So that's my, that's my superpower, my drive. When I, when I get it on the brain, it's on and popping, you know, let's see who's going to stop the train, you know, um, and that's mine. And I love each of you all's um, superpowers. And it is evident uh, that it's the truth, you know, again, not just giving lip service, y'all are doing that each and every day. Um, tonight has been absolutely refreshing. I look forward to, I was counting down. I don't know when I first reached out to you all, but I'm like, man, we got 30 more days. Man, we got 20 more days. I'm just ready. I'm ready to get to you all, but it's been so refreshing and amazing. And I am ready, like tomorrow, I'm going to be rejuvenated. You know, I'm going to kind of find a repurpose in what it is I'm after, uh, who I'm trying to impact, how I lead how I'm empathetic, how I'm trying to connect and, and make sure that I'm inclusive and communicating and all of the things that you all mentioned tonight. Um, and I want to scratch that when we log off, that's what I want to, you know, get ready to do. I don't want to just wait till I wake up. And I say that for the uh, audience and those who are listening in and watching tonight, start immediately after you log off. Uh, take all of these nuggets, all this insight um, that these ladies have shared with you because they truly have value in how you're gonna to continue to be sex, uh, successful, excuse me. Uh, and not just in your leadership and your organizations, but in your homes, you know, we're mothers of, you know, um, four leggeds or we're mothers of two leggeds, uh, we're spouses, we're significant others. Um, you know, we are a multitude of things and we're leading in every single capacity. And even to what you said, St. Keisha earlier, we're leading ourselves, you know, every single day. So I urge each of you that's on here tonight to make sure that when you log off and get off Facebook tonight, you got to get out tonight. Uh, make sure that you're taking these things and do that. Um, so I couldn't be more than grateful. I just definitely want to, you know, let each of you know that I'm so grateful that you um, opted to be on here with me tonight. Um, and I want to make sure that my audience, I know where to find y'all. You know, I got the I got the quick line. But I want the audience to be able to connect to you all if, if you all are inclined, whatever medium that you uh, prefer, if you all could just share how we can connect with you uh, and source for others uh, in their mission going forward. Um, I can be reached at um, uh, bloom.org, Sankedra at bloom901.org. Um, and if you guys wanna connect on Instagram, it's at bloom901 underscore Memphis. So hope to see y'all in these internet streets. Good deal. <laughs> and I can be reached at a stepaheadfoundation.org or you can go to our Instagram page. Or if you wanted to connect with me personally, you can just go to my Facebook page and shoot me a message. I'm not that important that you can't reach me and send me a message and I show up for whatever it is you need me for. So, and I will put this plug, if there's any young ladies listening between 17 and 35, we have a scholarship. We've given out $1.2 million for post-secondary education. And around January, the end of January, keep your eyes open. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message and I'll be more than happy to help you. Catch that plug. I hope y'all heard that. <laughs> Good deal. Shalia? Uh, it depends on what you want. Um, if you, <laughs> if you are trying to connect, um, uh, some youth that are experiencing homelessness, uh, or you are homeless, um, it's livinggracememphis at gmail.com. 
Uh, if it's anything related to telecom or policy, uh, it is shalia.harris at verizon.com. If it is anything related to education in the school board, it is Harris S12 at scsk12.org. And if you just want to talk to me, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them are just Shalia Harris, just plain and simple. And then shalia.harris at gmail.com. I will answer all 10 of my emails and phone calls and, and social media. So just, you know, awesome. one of them. All right, y'all got y'all got the invite. Uh, we don't want to hear that you didn't know how to get in touch with them and that you're feeling like you don't have a resource. So uh, viewers, thank each of you for joining us tonight. Be sure to connect with the ladies. Uh, remember, a resource is truly only a resource if you use it. Uh, and I have one special announcement before I get off. Um, uh, because I want to be able to give more through the Great E Leadership, um, for those, I want to say you all who are viewing tonight, you can be the first to learn about an open call for nominations that we're going to have. So our signature course, which is Confidence and Reach, is held. It's going to be held in January, and it's going to be our fifth cohort. And uh, we are taking nominations starting tonight. So I'll be posting that. Uh, but participants will be able to enhance, develop their levels of confidence with key strategic tools and methods, thus achieving uh, personal and professional goals and becoming more effective in your leadership. And remember, leadership is not position. Um, so wherever you are, we're looking to help enhance that level of confidence, uh, as many of you mentioned tonight, some of the ladies on the panel, um, because it takes you to greater heights when you know who you are uh, and don't doubt it in any space. So COVID had been friendly to us, to say the least, and the level of confidence has been compromised for some of us. And so this course will help you be able to get back on your A game. Visit the Great New Leadership Series page on Facebook and IG. Uh, and nominate someone today to be a part of the Winter 2021 Confidence in Reach course. Uh, I'm gonna take five participants, male or female, don't think this is just a woman's thing, so men, men need confidence boosters as well. Uh, so I'm gonna take five uh, people through the cohort, uh, through the course, and it's just gonna be an amazing time to be able to enhance yourself. In the meantime, if you enjoyed tonight, connect with the Grady Leadership Series for great content. Uh, subscribe to our website at www.thegreateryouleadershipseries.com uh, and visit, like, share, uh, share us on Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, and on YouTube now. You get to see, you'll be able to see this playback on YouTube. So you all, let, you ladies look gorgeous tonight. It'll be, you know, posted somewhere for here until kingdom come, all right? <laughs> so thank you again, everyone. Um, if, if you all have anything, nothing else, we're going to shut down. Oh, I love being so timely. Okay. We Come want on. to thank you and give you your flowers. Yeah. Thank you for giving oh. us the platform. Thank you. You know, to to thank be you. a strong woman, you surround yourself with strong women who are doing the work. So thank you for allowing your voice to be heard and your leadership to be shown and acknowledging and giving other women a platform. So we couldn't get off of here without giving you your flowers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I know this is not going to be the last time we're going to connect, but to everyone else, have an amazing night, and um, you all know where to find us. Let's leave.